I'm Jonas, uh, Mean Machine um, on HWBot, and I've been overclocking for quite a while. Um, well, how do I introduce myself? I don't know. There's not, not much to say about me. Uh, nowadays, I work for MSI Notebook Marketing. Education-wise, I don't really have one, to be honest. Uh, I failed upper secondary school in Sweden. Or I didn't fail, I was just bored with it because I was working and uh, I was writing a lot for Nordic Hardware. We did some video projects. Uh, so I was among the first to actually do video hardware reviews in Sweden. And I was uh, an editor at the same time. So a lot of reviews, a lot of overclocking, a lot of uh, hardware videos and events. So that is my background, I suppose. I have been overclocking since maybe, I don't know when I really started, I think my first steps were in 2003, 2004, I used to do some overclocking on air. Uh, for me it was all about theoretic performance, the overclocking bit. So I started, I found myself buying CPUs just so I could push them further. Same with memory, like back then it was BH5 DDR1. And uh, all of a sudden, I found myself with a D OZZ DDR booster pushing four volts through them with literally no, well, it was a fan on them cooling them, but not much else. And uh, I think the most fun I had back then was with a Duron Apple bred 1400 megahertz CPU, which did like 2.5 gigahertz on air or something. So it was, it was, it became an addiction. I just wanted to push things further and further, and uh, that's. How it went. In 2008, I think I stepped into extreme overclocking with uh, GOC 2008. I was there. Uh, the f well, I'm not sure if that was the first GOC, but I, w I was in the contest. And from there on out, I did some overclocking for a few years. Went with liquid nitrogen for fun mostly. I was never very competitive, but uh, well, I did some of the GOCs and MOAs. Uh, because I was back then involved with Nordic Hardware, so sometimes I was covering the events, sometimes I was actually competing whenever there was a spot. So coming from Sweden and uh, yeah. My best moment in overclocking would probably be MOA uh, in 20, was it 20? I don't even remember which year, that's how great <laughs> it was. Uh, it was 2010, uh, in MOA 2010, I managed to qualify second in the European MOA finals. And um, actually, funny, funny thing, uh, I don't remember it as much for, uh, that much for the overclocking, as much as I actually hooked up with my then girlfriend afterwards, because I brought her to the event, so that was a funny, funny moment there. So. Uh, back then, uh, I think Elmore and me, for me, we, which were the two main Swedish overclockers who I would have liked to team up with, they were already teaming up because they were direct qualified because they won the previous finals the year before. So I was like, ah, I gotta bring someone else. And the rest of the overclockers, sorry for saying this now, but they're all gonna, they all hate me anyways. Um, I didn't feel like there was anybody who was Made, it made, didn't make any sense to bring anyone else than Elmore and me for me. So I was like, hey, I know this pretty girl, I'll bring her along. So <laughs> that was a weird, weird thing. And then uh, I think Ryba from Poland, he did the same for the next MOA or something. So it was fun stories, good memories, good memories. Overclocking wise, not very, I don't really have any great memories of overclocking that much. It's, it, it's, it's been fun, but there's no moment that actually stands out so much. Overclocking is, is much easier now. Um, it's not really the challenge it used to be. Uh, so I've stopped pretty much a couple of years ago already. When I actually joined MSI, the first thing they told me is like, oh, you're not an overclocker anymore. So I said, thank you very much. What am I doing here then? Um, but then I found that, well, with uh, the newer Core i7 CPUs, uh, which ones was it? The 2500K, 2600K, that's where it started. It's there. It's too hard to find a good one, while it is too easy to reach the limits of them. It's not. There's no challenge in the overclocking anymore, like there, 
before with say golf town there was a lot of things you could tweak and um, also it's actually I find it more fun when the, the temperatures are when, when you can cool them a bit more so with I mean when there's a cold but it's, it's, a, it's a silly thing but it's more extreme when you're running at minus 190 compared to minus 30 or 60 or whenever the center bridge CPUs and Haswells start failing so uh, I don't know weird reasons I guess how to improve overclocking is nothing I've really given any thoughts of because I'm so far into, well, some imaginary retirement if there was something to retire from to begin with. I don't really know, um, but I suppose it would, if there's a challenge anywhere, I mean, it might be more fun, but right now it's, you can bin CPUs in a matter of minutes rather than finding new things, to, finding the limits of your CPU after a couple of bench sessions rather than just in five minutes, so uh, I don't know, I'm not, I don't really have a good answer on how to improve overclocking if I'm honest. So those starting in overclocking, I would probably say just, just have fun, do things just for fun. You're never, th this is a hobby that's gonna cost you a lot of money uh, but don't let anyone suck the fun out of it. Just, I mean, if, if you think it's fun, go for it. Just invest in it. But you will never make money off of it. <laughs> uh, maybe that's one thing to remember from the get-go. Uh, furthermore, I would say, yeah, join the events, meet people. It's fun. And the people are what makes the, the community, I suppose. Well, I live in Taiwan, so uh, I've been here since uh, since September 2014. Uh, Taipei is a great city, uh, or great, great, it's not a great city, but it's a city. Uh, coming from Stockholm, from the woods outside of Stockholm in Sweden, uh, for me it was more of a question of like, hey, let's try something different, let's step out of my comfort zone. So moving into the bustle of, uh, of Taipei, I mean, it's, uh, it's an interesting place to be. The reason I'm here is the hardware industry. Uh, not very impressed uh, with Taipei as as I thought I'd be, uh, as much as I thought I'd be, but uh, it's, it's a change and that's what I was looking for. <laughs>